Hey losers, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I am here today because I finished last night my 100th book for the Read What You Own Challenge. This is a challenge conceived by Ollie at Criminali. I will leave a link to his channel. He has a wonderful channel. He reads a lot of like uh, strange, pulpy fiction. And recently, he's done a lot of videos with like e-readers that I've been watching. Very cool. This challenges book hoarders like myself to read 100 books that you own before you buy anything new. And I, when I started this, I did make a couple rules for myself or bend the rules a little bit for myself to make this a more successful or to, um, to make this something that I could be more successful at, such as I had an allowance for subscriptions that I had, gifts obviously, um, if I ended up going anywhere out of town, you know, if we were to go to any small bookstores or something, I wasn't gonna like not do that, you know, uh, things like that. So I did have a couple of like allowances, not all of those events ended up taking place or anything like that, but I did, uh, I did have a couple things, a couple cheats you might say. I just wanted to do a little run through, I guess, about like how I feel now that this experience is over because it, it was kind of a wild ride. Um, first I want to start out with, I guess, like just that this was the book I started with, Little Eve by Katrina Ward. I started this on November 1st. 2023. I ended this with Wormwood by Chad Lutsky and Tim Meyer. Um, this I finished June 13th, 2024. So it took me, how many months is that? June to December to January, February, March, April, May, June. It took um, about seven and a half months for me to complete this challenge. I was also sometimes borrowing books from the library and I did also sometimes have um, books outside of my read what you own challenge books that I was reading. So I wasn't reading only books that counted towards my read what you own challenge during this time, but primarily I was. I should have counted, but um, you know, I would say probably 85% of what I was reading was towards the read what you own challenge. Um, 15 of the books that I read were five star reads, which is pretty good. There were four books that I read quite a bit of and ended up DNFing, but I still counted towards my goal. That was one thing when I started, I think like the first two I DNFed and I was like, ugh, I, these don't count towards my goal. Like I, I was not DNFing books because I wanted to count them towards this. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be a big problem. And then I was like, well, if I like, I read a decent amount of them and they're not going back on my shelves. So I feel like for, for myself, I'm going to count this. There was one that I DNF'd after like 25 pages that I'm like, mm, this doesn't, I feel like this doesn't count. The shortest book I read was Husk by Rachel Autumn Deering. This was 84 pages. And the longest I read was The Terror by Dan Simmons. And this is 769 pages. This was a great book. This is one of my five star reads. Then like, how do I feel? I feel like this changed a lot of things <laughs> for me. This changed a lot of things for me, which is very surprising, I think. I went into this and I was like, I mean, like nobody forced me to do this. I decided to do this. This is for me the second year I've seen people doing this. I'm not sure if this is the second year that Ollie's been doing this, but this is the second year I've seen people and Ollie doing this. And at first I was like, Mm, no, I hate this. I hate this idea. Not buying books, like, ew. But then I was thinking about it and I'm like, but wouldn't it be cool to see if I could do it? And I'm like, why don't I do 25 books? And then I was like, 
why don't I do 100 books? And then I kept thinking like, I'm never gonna make it. I'm never gonna make it to the end without buying books. And I technically did not make it all the way to 100. I made it to like maybe high 80s or like 90s without like me going out and buying books that weren't within my like allotment that I gave myself at the beginning of the challenge, right? But I kept going because I was like, you know, what's the point in stopping now, right? So I did my read my 100 books. I did, <laughs> I did buy a couple books for myself towards the end, but I think I was pretty successful still. So what did this change? I think that this made me realize that I have so many books that I don't want to read, frankly, don't want to fucking read on my shelves. And then I'm thinking like, why is that? That's so silly. Why would I have these? So I did a huge book on haul. It took me hours. It took me like a whole day to do it and then put my shelves back together. That's probably what took the longest. I'm still like picking things off, honestly. Um, especially like I was editing, I filmed it and I edited the video and I'm like, I was like, why well, not? You know, I'm watching myself talk and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna keep this just because I have this. And it's like, but, the, but I just did that, <laughs> this other book. And that doesn't make sense. So like I'm, I'm taking other things off. And so I haven't planned a like book splurge for myself for today, which I think is a good sign. I am thinking about like my finite space and how I have an inventory basically. I have inventory slots and each book counts. So what is the, what are the most important ones? And I'm also thinking about, you know, continuing to read what I have. Like that is going to be a, a huge priority. And I'm not really sure still how I'm going to balance that with being able to buy things and read them and have new releases come in and read them <laughs> because I still have you know, three almost full shelves of things that I own and I have not read. How, how am I gonna do this? How am I going to balance this still? And like, oh, there's just so many good books that are coming out. That's, it's hard. So yeah, and, and <laughs> I, I want to be reading these unread books because I want to know whether they are staying or not. That's the big thing. Um, I want to know, are they books I'm keeping? Or are they books I'm getting rid of? And for the ones that are here right now, they're here because I don't know that yet. I don't know whether they're staying or going. So I kind of need to discover, I need to read and figure, figure that out, which is hard, which is the hard part. I like have to read like a demon now, I feel like. And, but also somehow not stress myself out. <laughs> I'm also thinking about like how I can utilize my library system better, which I, I do use the library often, especially with audiobooks. I've always, I've almost always got an audiobook going. I think that this is a good way for me to, with with some new releases, like with what I can find of new releases, um, listen to them and then decide whether or not they are books that I want to get a copy of. Also there's NetGalley, which I'm utilizing, although I am, oh gosh, I am behind on my arcs since April. Uh, I need to read some of those this month. So yeah, I think that that will, will help. 
being able to secure copies of arcs of new releases, hopefully being able to get copies of some new releases. I mean, they don't all come through my library, of course, but some of them do. And then, I don't know, like, just, I think also some of it is, I'm not, I can't get everything right away. Some things I need to wait, I need to see, kind of like read the room about how people are feeling. Maybe. That's also hard though because I don't always share the, the opinion of everybody. So I, I really, I don't know. I mean, this is like, these are the baby steps right afterwards that I'm going to have to take the kind of wobbly baby horse steps where I'm kind of figuring out where I go from here, I guess. What I do from here and how to do it successfully without going overboard again. And I make it seem like I have no self-control, which maybe is a little bit true. I just, <laughs> uh, I just really love finding a good book. I really do. I really do. I really do. And part of it is buying used books because it's like, if it's used, it's cheap. And then I'm like, look at this. I found, I wanted this book anyways, and here it is for cheap. How can I say no? <laughs> How can I say no? Um, so I don't know. That's, it's, that's a whole other thing. That is a whole other thing. Would I do the read what you own challenge again? Yes. I don't know when. I don't know when because there are also things that for me, the read what you own challenge hindered obviously like reading new releases, um, rereading things that I wanted to. I didn't really do rereads because I didn't feel like that counted. For me at least, I'm not sure how other people interpret that, but for me at least, rereads didn't feel like they counted towards my goal, which is a bummer because I do like to reread things from time to time. And like really when I get the bug, like I wanna do it. And it's just like, boy, it took me seven and a half months and I am a fairly, like the, the past seven months, I have read a lot of books. I've read a lot of books. I think these have been some of the most productive reading months I've had in a long time. So, oh, that's another thing. It has really fucking pushed me to read very, a lot of books. It's pushed me to read very, a lot of books. So I would like to do it again, but I definitely need some time to not, to also not be doing it. So next November, no, maybe the November after, we'll have to see. Maybe I will um, choose a lower numbered goal. I think starting off with a 100, I'm like really proud of myself knowing that I can fucking do that. But also that's a lot of books. <laughs> It's a lot and I also, I didn't choose small books. I just, I read what I wanted to, you know? I didn't purposely choose things that were small and easy to get through. As you can see by my massive book, my massive choice in the terror. So I guess that's just like a little discussion about the Read What You Own challenge. I can't believe actually like how much this has changed my book buying habits very weird to think about i this is something i was not expecting as an outcome of this like not to not to call it silly in like a you know belittling way but it is just a challenge that i gave myself and this seems like kind of a, a major outcome for for me so thanks Ollie, great challenge. Um, I would like to know, you know, if you guys have been doing this, if you've done this in the past, like what did you think? Have you, have you finished it? How many books did you choose for yourself? Were you successful? Even if you weren't, 
I understand. That shit is hard. I mean, like, technically, was I successful in not buying books before my 100 was done? No. But I did read 100 books that I owned. So, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm gonna call it a success for myself, especially because it, I feel like it, uh, rewired my brain a little bit. So anyway, yeah, I'd love to know if any of you have participated in this, like what your thoughts on it are. If you do it again, if you think it changed any of your book buying habits. Uh, but otherwise, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I will see you later. Goodbye.